welcome, welcome to the Photography Club here in Green Valley. Hope everybody's had a good week. Look at the crowd. <laughs> we love it. So good to see so many people coming out. And if you can, please join us. We love having everybody out here. Uh, we've got lots of videos to share today. Uh, it's February 6th. Uh, I'm going to start normally. I don't start with something that I've done because this isn't something that I've done. But this is, we've done a version, a long version. I call it a long version. Long story. This is for Equine Voices. And this is a video that we did to kind of tell their story. It's only a five minute video, so it's nice and short, but it really come across good. And we have a lot of our club members that have helped on this video. So going out and shooting the equine voices and stuff. We interviewed Karen, who is the uh, founder of equine voices back in August. So you see how sometimes these projects take forever to get going. So let's see if I can share that. Hang on a second. I quit my corporate job in 94 and backpacked around the world for 18 months and that changed my life. I realized that I wanted to do something for animals and something bigger than just myself. When I came back from my trip, I met a woman that was saving wild mustangs and I worked for her for about four years and that's really what propelled me to get into the nonprofit world. I moved to Arizona and found a little piece of property, a piece of what I call heaven and it was five acres at the time, and we've expanded to about 25 acres now. We've been here since 2004, and we've gone through a lot of environmental issues, economic issues. 2008 was rough, and then COVID hit. The economy right now is a little tricky. Our hay prices have gone up. They've doubled since last year, so what we would pay $6,400 for a load of hay is now almost $12,000, and that's just hay alone. After next year, we will have half of our herd over 20 years old. So they're getting older, they require special needs. We rescue some really, really hard cases like the recent one, Angelique and Summer Rain. Angelique had to go to the hospital. So those financial challenges, vet bills, food, is probably the biggest challenge that we face. And I don't see that changing. As far as cost is concerned, everything is pretty much doubled. Hay is just one part of what we feed here. We don't have pasture. A lot of the older horses are on special supplements and medications and things like that. It just adds up, but somehow we make it because we have such a huge support system in the community. And for instance, like Angelique, donations just came in because of her story and everybody, the people really wanted to help her. And because of that, I was able to take her to the hospital. So somehow we're making it work and I will continue to work really, really hard on their behalf, no matter what the cost is. Right now, we're raising money for more shelters because the boroughs don't have any shelter, and then we have three other crowds that don't have shelters, and I wanna make sure everybody has shelter to go under from the rain and the heat and, you know, the winters. Sometimes we get snow. So that's where the money's primarily going to. Anything that's left over will go through daily operational costs. Our volunteer program is pretty structured because the animals are so big. There is no way I would be able to do this without them. They, I've always said from the, from the beginning that they're the backbone of this organization. They come here when it's 110 degrees out, when it's cold in the winter, it can be 20 degrees out, and they show up every day and they work really, really hard. And now that we have 25 acres, the help is, is not only appreciated, but it's needed. The emotional roller coaster, that's what affects me the most, is the ones I can save, I'm always so grateful for, it's the ones that I can't save, that I have a hard time with, you know? So it's, it's hard, it's not an easy thing, but I do yoga and I meditate and I pray a lot and those are the things that keep me grounded. So I keep doing those things and they help me kind of keep those emotions in check. I want to mention Gulliver because he was the catalyst for starting Equine Voices and he came in with three other babies, they were 11 months old then, and they were pretty sick. I didn't think they were going to die, but he was touted to be big and ugly and he was definitely going to slaughter. And then he became our mascot. That is one of the happiest stories for me because he is the guy, I mean he is the representative of Equine Voices and to think that he would have been on a meat hook 
or on someone's plate for dinner in Europe. It just makes my heart sing that we were able to rescue him. And that was way early on at the beginning. I hadn't even started the 501 yet. So, so that's just one. And there's so many other stories that, that we can, all of us can be really proud of in saving these lives. I think the main thing is always stepping outside of ourselves and doing something bigger for somebody or something else. The world doesn't revolve around us individuals necessarily, at least that's how I feel. I think the big thing is continuing to educate about what horses go through. The wild Mustang issue is devastating. Horses have built our country and what's happening to them is atrocious. They're being sent across the borders for slaughter for human consumption. 200,000 a year approximately are being sent to slaughter. And a lot of people don't know what's going on, what the truth is. A lot of people are not aware of the Mustang issue, the roundups that are happening. It's devastating. Colorado just had the biggest roundup ever. Babies are dying because they're chasing them with helicopters. It's horrific. Continuing the education, I think, is really critical. Not only does that help the horses, it changes people's lives, too. That's my main goal and my main mission for this, for this organization. Any questions on that or thoughts? How is she using that now? This literally just came out. Uh, I showed it to her on Thursday, I think. Uh, long story short, but we basically I put this we put this together, and before I wanted to get it out there, obviously we want to show it to the client. So I showed it to her, and I told the story earlier a little bit. Uh, I said, we're going to watch this twice. The first time you watch it, you can't say a word. <laughs> Second time, we can ask questions or whatever, or what changes we need to make. Do you like it or not? So at the very beginning, the first photo, she said, oh, I'm so glad you used that photo. And I'm like, that's <laughs> <"Is> that <thing? laughs> So then she watched the whole thing, and I said, what do you think? She said, I love it. I said, is there anything you want to change? She said, not a thing. Yeah. Which is amazing because usually there's some some goodie that somebody wants to change. Well, uh, well, yeah. but I, I think it's also it's part of it too. Is in this case she did this interview eight months ago. You forget what you've said or what we've talked about, and maybe there's something that we that she's saying in there. She's like, oh, I don't want to use that now or whatever. So anyway, it really. Uh, it worked out absolutely great, and I, I see they're going to be doing this on social media, Facebook, and all that, and they'll also be putting this on the EV website for people to see. And then she's going out to Washington, D.C. in, I think, a month or two to speak at some congressional hearing about this Mustang issue, and she's going to show this as part of that presentation. So it's been, it's going to be very cool. I only produced this. All of this. Did I produce this? Yeah. Well, I did. I'm the ringleader of this this group of us doing everything. The video. Well, yeah, I did all the editing on this. How, but, how, oh, you're so fine. How many people were involved in our secret group? Oh, I would say we had what we have time. We had probably about at least seven or eight. Yeah. Million. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've had people going out and a lot of stuff being, uh, all, you know, all the stuff that you see, the still photography, like Todd, Todd's drone shot is at the very beginning. And we have all our, our members that are contributing that have come out to help on this. So it really is a group project. And going, going forward, we'll still do other things to help them. And then we're talking about helping some other charities here in Green Valley as well, as a group. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, yes, Tom. Yeah, because I think the other thing is, this was a great learning experience for the multimedia SIG members that participated because we went from soup to nuts in terms of how to put together a story. Um, and thank you, Kevin, for giving us the opportunity to do that. Because um, well, that, that was great, you know, because yeah, there's a lot of Kevin in this, but uh, but he, he did an excellent job of sharing that whole process with the people that participated on this so that we never felt like we were left out of the process, which is fantastic. Well, and ultimately, that's what a group project is about. It's getting people involved and getting to experience, hey, what's it like to go do like the interview process that we did? 
and we're setting up lights and multiple cameras and you know we're we're doing a lot of stuff that normally people don't get to see so from that to the editing process and then finally putting the b-roll the pictures on top and everything uh, it is a process and it takes time uh, but the good thing is we come in as a group, we, we put together something that's really nice, and I think it really represents what this group is and what this group can be. And when you think about how, if you've started with projects, just you know a slideshow or whatever, think about the first one you did. I know the first one I did was horrible. Horrible. <laughs> and I look what I'm doing now, and I'm like, damn, that looks pretty good. So that's where we want to progress as a group. So anyway, yes, yes, Doug. Did you shave that first one? Oh, I I showed it. <laughs> I showed the first video, and I can show it again. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> but it's nice to keep that. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> don't know? worry. I, at some point, I can I can show that to you. Yeah, it's it's out on YouTube. But uh, yeah, it's, it, the sound is horrible. I didn't know what I was doing. It was bad news. So anyway, all right. Well, uh, let's go to Pat, because I know Pat has got a goodie that he sent me. And Pat, why don't you talk about this a little bit, and then we'll show it. Okay, over the last few years, we've, my wife and I have heard about uh, Whitewater Draw and the ability to see, I guess, thousands of birds. And so we had missed the club's event opportunities. In the past, so another couple and my I wife and I decided to go out there and see what Whitewater was all about. And this is just a, a little video of our experience uh, about a week or so ago.
uh, for your Zoomers there, were you able to see that? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Yes, able to see it. The, I had to crank up my uh, volume on my desktop quite a bit to hear it. Um, what did people think? I thought it was great. I love right. the close-ups. I love that he did the hands as well as the close-ups. Okay, good. I thought the photography was very nice. Yep. Yeah, I mean, on the sound, it just needed adjusted. It was too quiet in the beginning and then kind of too loud, so... It, he would pick a level and go to normalization. Yeah, I think that was intentional. That was intentional. Yeah. I guess the thing I would say, Pat, about that, just from a, a standpoint of maybe the other goodie too, is when you first started the very first couple of slides, there was no sound at all. And maybe if you started with that wild ambient sound, which is really nice, at the very beginning, people would hear it. I think that you did need to raise that level up just a little bit at the beginning because it is it is quiet. Uh, then when you come to more of the action stuff where you've got the video and stuff, then that sound level is fine. So that you could keep there, but then maybe raise that beginning up just a little bit. The captions were humorous. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, anybody else have anything on that that they thought? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Pat, for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Uh, let me see here. What else do I have? Um, Mr. Taylor, why don't you talk about your little drone uh, video? Which one did you say you want me to show first? So um, there's Master Shot, and then there's the yeah, the Master Shot one first. Okay. All right. Hang on a second. Go ahead. And talk okay. about it a little bit. So. What this is, um, uh, Doug and Royce and do this Bill, over here so they can see you. Bill and Catherine here. We're over here. There you go, right there. <laughs> we're we're in the process of putting together this drone workshop, which uh, has led me to do a little bit more research with my drone and learn some of the other features. Okay. And so one of the features that I learned about that I did not even know existed here a week ago was called Master Shots. Okay. And so what Master Shot is, um, is you have to have it launched. It has to be in the air for you to switch to, to Master Shot. But once you press that button, what it does, it does several moves in a short period of time. Hmm. So it, it starts out by swinging kind of back and forth in front of the subject. So you have to pick the subject on, on your screen. So it goes back and forth, then it does what they call a droney. So it's like a full back, okay. and then I'll do an elliptical, and then I'll do a closed circle, and then okay. a wide circle, and then it'll do what they call a rocket, and just straight straight from above. And it does it all in somewhere between two and three minutes. Okay. So the first one we're going to see here is the original one that I did. Okay. It's about two minutes long. Okay. And then you press a button, and it takes it, and it condenses it, into a short 30 second one and puts music to it. Okay. <laughs> so is it and, and you can immediately go on to okay. Facebook or YouTube okay. and, and put it straight on there. So the program is automating the flight for you and then it's doing the yeah. master shot after. Yeah, I mean okay. it, it doesn't get much easier. Okay, well let's take a look at that. It's the
And then we're going to share. This is this will be the one that's completed. Hang on, one second, everybody. There's about a dozen different types of music that you can pick. Oh, so you pick. Yes, you tell them what you want. Yeah. Good it Good is, Good it's Good interesting Good. in terms of having that ability to do it automated. Yeah. I would rather see people do it manually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to do all those shots, pick the shot. You know, it's nice if you were in a jam and you didn't have a lot of time to say, okay, boom, you launch it, hit the automated, do it. But you do all the shots. That's part of the fun of creating something is the person doing it, mm -hmm. not necessarily the program. But it is interesting. So I'm not poo pooing it in that regard. Well, I mean, I I don't know that I would use it if I was putting together, I would use that if I was putting together right. a video and everything. But if you're on vacation or something and sure. you know, you know, it's your family on the beach or something right. like that. You can, you know, hit that button sure. and it'll do that in a couple of minutes and, you know, kind of easy peasy and send it off to friends and family oh, or everything. I can uh, see that. Yeah. I said to go back here. He's got the best. Yeah, it'll be a killer at the nude beach. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have you got to the gummies this morning? That's what I want. Uh, okay, I think this time you can, if you've ever been to any of the new beaches, you won't be <laughs> The people who are there aren't the ones that should be. <laughs> or at least the ones you imagine in your mind. <laughs> okay. Okay. So a lot of new beaches, I went to cons when I was in my 20s, and we were hoping to find a new beach, and we did. It was the grandmothers and the girls under 10. Oh, <laughs> that sounds like trouble all the way. <laughs> all right. Uh, does anybody else have anything on that they want to add? Okay. Uh, Rick, why don't you tell us about your video? Okay. So this is my first attempt at any kind of video at all. Okay. Um, it's just on phone, on iMovie, on my iPad. Basically, yeah, very familiar location. Is this the IMG 493, correct? Yes. <laughs> that it? Okay, good. Thanks, sir. All right.
Great music. Those are great. Music. Yeah, and the photos, the photography yeah. and, and videography was a really nice mix. Um, good that you did the signs and the map and the people, as well as you know, focusing on birds, of course. But nice. an introduction with the shadow on the ground, and then you end up onto the side. Mm -hmm. so that's great. Yeah. Tilted. And you get there at the right oh, time. Tilted. Tilted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now you shot that all on your phone? Yeah. And then how did you edit that? Yeah, I moved you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, movie. No, on iPad. Oh, and you edited it on iPad. And I nice. Interesting. I'll tell you what, really nice job. Nice, like Holly said, nice selection of imagery and also that you didn't just give us a section of bird, a section of people, a section of scenery. You kind of mixed it up, mm -hmm. which really makes it interesting for the viewer. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. 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 I don't yeah, the, <laughs> the, the shot, the video shot with the water ripping there, where you had the camera down close to the water level. I thought it was that appeals to me a lot. I put it down there. I agree. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so many things we try to do because we watch television, we try to go fast, 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 fast and excite. And, you know, oh, I'm going to grab the audience. And uh, this had a beautiful pace to it. You could, yeah. you could take the time to look at the photographs. And, and experience the music, and that that's that's really rare. And I, I think I'd like to see a lot more of that. Yeah. Slow down and really see things. I really Is that it. all handheld, or do you have one of the? I did get a gimbal about yeah. halfway through the shooting, and then <laughs> like for that little water scene. Yeah, that was on a gimbal. Nice. Yeah, that was. So, so how many how many times did you go to Kenora to get get all the stuff you needed? Oh, probably. Uh, different times of the day for maybe over two weeks, maybe eight or ten times. Wow. Oh, wow. So you know what it shows? It shows that you did that. You know, sometimes I think we we go someplace like we would go to Canola and you go for a couple hours and you're going to put something together from that. Well, yeah. it shows that you took the time to go at different yeah. times. You live here in spring, so it's just like a yeah, yeah. quick job down there. Yeah, but that, that says a lot to like John's point of it just. There's a nice flow to everything, and it's very tranquil. The music was great. Soothing. It, exactly. Soothing is a great word. I mean, you watch that, and man, if you had high blood pressure, it'd be down. After that. That fits so well with what Canelo did. Yes. That experience. It really was the experience of Canelo, which is soothing. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Well, yeah. all right, what are you going to do for us next week? Next <laughs> week. <laughs> I'm not today. I'm not another one. So. Oh, good. I'm there. Good. And Chuck, I will be sending you some of these. Yeah, can, get can you share that on short time? Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. All right. Um, anybody on uh, Zoom have anything they want to add to that? Okay. Just very nice. I, I loved it. Yeah, very nice. It's nice to see, the, and it's nice to see the iPhone done, doing so well or uh, Android. Oh, yeah. You know, we don't have to have a bit of fancy camera. We can do it with an iPhone. Okay. Well, I do too. Oh, yeah, don't worry. I'm not, not, I got the camera in your iPhone. I'm not all against the big <laughs> camera, that's for sure. But it's nice to know that we can show somebody this and say, hey, look at what was done with an iPhone. So well done. Well done. Um, Arlene, why don't you talk about the video you've got to share with us, please? Okay, so it's just a short video of cacti. There is cacti around Arizona, and I made this for my friends on the East Coast. Okay, great. Hang on a second here.
What do we think? Right? <laughs> I mean, once again, your choice of music just enhances the all of this, I think. That takes time. <laughs> and the cartoon that I'm making now, so far, I'm only about 50 hours. Oh, but it's, it, it, the music choice was just superb. Yeah. It really is. I loved how the, the photographs were beautiful, but then the background that matched the photos. Oh. That was cool. Is that a yeah, so what's sort of the transition thing? Yeah, well, it's a transition, but when I did one, so I large. Yeah, that worked really well. That was nice. It just takes, it takes time. Yes. The one thing I was thinking too is it possible? I'm sure it is. Everything turned clockwise. Can you mix that up and have some go counterclockwise? When your pictures came in, they would always turn clockwise. Yeah. It would just make it just a little bit more interesting if if you would if they would vary what they're doing okay. this is thought but i love the other thing that i did love about it too was your titling and putting some of the titles in on some of these cactus a lot of us have no idea what some of these are so that was really nice for you to name some of those and and uh, show us that so well done on that um does anybody have anything on zoom for that Look great. I want to exclude you. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, anybody else have any thoughts on that? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. How can you use the computer? Okay. Or Adobe Premier Pro. And she's on a PC, so yeah. you can do it on both platforms. Back or yeah, you just have to pay six hundred and well, sure. thirty nine dollars a year or the year until you die. We have a copy here. It's like I'm like going to the last Well, I think we put it over here. Yeah, can you imagine I'm going to be over here for fifty hours? It's great. We have to bring it. Well, you might have a permanent seat here. If you're spending that kind of time over here at the club. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Arlene. Um, Holly, why don't you tell us about your video, please? Okay, well, this is the book. Uh, a few weeks ago, I showed uh, my thoughts, basically, a sketch of um, travelogue that I, I need to do for both Paul and for Travel Club, which has to be done in March, so I will be finishing this. Okay. But I got some input from this group, and basically what I heard was my proposal was kind of boring. So I thought, <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, i got to do the hook and we'll see if it still is or what else they have to tell me before I finish. So this is just the first like maybe three minutes, a little less of uh, what will be a travel show. Oh, great. All right. Well, I, let's, I just let's check that out. So this is down Iceland. Nice. Mm -hmm.
Iceland is located between the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates. You can actually walk between the two. As the land uplifts and moves and comes together, it often forms crevices which catch water and result in spectacular waterfalls in Iceland. Walk behind this waterfalls and make a wish. We were told it's sure to come true. Hot magma close to the surface heats water, and that eventually can get so pressurized it erupts in a geyser. Sometimes the magma itself erupts and becomes lava as it flows out of the peak of a volcano and later cools to form volcanic rock. Hot magma may cause hot springs which are harnessed for energy and for pure enjoyment in hot springs like the Blue Lagoon. Lava cools in odd ways sometimes, forming unusual artistic creations of the earth. the rock is broken down by the wave action and wind action and eventually forms the famous black sand beaches. What do we think? Well, all right, I want to go. <laughs> yes, so, I mean, I like the way you're here. It's a non-traditional travel introduction. I'm so tired of the travel logs. I always start out with, you know, me and my suitcase telling you where I was going. Okay. That case is very classic. Thank you. Yes, I, 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 I think I've beaten these things by the lava shop. What the hell did you get there? <laughs> Did you speak yeah, I stole them. Wow. That, they were from a place there uh, called the Lava Show. So it's just, and it, it's, it's like, um, I, I, want, I want to go get my own. How do I do that? You can go. You have to make sure you go when one of the volcanoes is erupting, which happened like days after we left. It was about to blow when we were the next. That's what's really nice. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. It's really pretty. You can go. <laughs> <laughs> or you can go to YouTube. A nice start. What do you what do you think the time will be on this when it's all said and done? Oh well, the travel show at, at the travel club is March, so it'll be done in March. No, I meant the length of the video. Oh, because you're going here. Um, I think I'm going to have to break it into two 20 minutes. Oh wow! So that the much. camera club, they have a 20 minute max, and you really have to have a lot of changes within that. Um, for travel. 
for travel log or travel club, I guess they call it the travel club. They like about a 45 minute. Wow. Oh, wow. So I well, just do a, a break in the middle. That's going to be quite the video in terms of producing that. That's a lot of content. Yeah. Well, and they do want to know that boring stuff that Jean was talking about. <laughs> they want to know about what groups did you go with and when did you go? And all this stuff. They, they want to know that. They just want to know that. So that'll be, you know, in there somewhere. Okay. Does anybody have anything else on that? All right. Uh, Ken and Lynn, you've got a quick little video that you did. Can you tell us about that, please? Yeah, the audience is Ken's dad. Uh, he just turned 99 years old. So we went back through our archives of photos and just put a little short um, video together. So this, so the audience is Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> just once a year we are happy that you are still here if you think you're getting old well honey let the truth be told you only have eternity to go you made it one more time around the sun now's the time you have to have more fun Kick up your heels, enjoy the ride, and let your god above just try. Now's the time when we all have to say, Have a happy birthday. Celebrate and dance with all your might. Have a happy birthday. Laugh and sing and celebrate your life. You are full of love and grace It pleases us to see your smiling face To see you rise and be a star We know that you'll go really far This life is short and you have just begun So have a happy birthday Celebrate and dance with all your might have a happy birthday. Laugh and sing and celebrate. Laugh and sing and celebrate. Laugh and sing and celebrate your life. Very nice. What are we saying? Oh. Don't have any idea how valuable that is to younger members of your family. It's like gold. It really is. It was fun going through all the old pictures. Sure. Yeah. I bet he loved them, huh? He did. Okay. Nice. Were some of those in slides to begin with? No. No. Some of them were slides, some of them were prints. Okay. You know, the thing that you did, which really was nice, uh, and Arlene did the same thing. When you had on a shot that wasn't vertical or it was square, it wasn't filling the frame. You expanded that, mm -hmm. put a layer, so you have the background. It's a little out of focus, and then you pop the picture on top, right? Which really is a nice way to show those pictures instead of it just being a black screen. The other thing I thought you could do, just and this is a minor thing, when the pictures came up like that, those 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 pictures. It'd be nice if you put a little dissolve in so it softened. The, the picture comes up very hard and quick. Okay. It'd be nice to see it just fade up, fade down. Oh, okay. Just as a thought. But other than that, okay. well done. And the other thing you could do too, just one other trick, Um At the very end, you have a black screen and the, the pictures have stopped and the music is still going a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, if it was me, just extend some of those pictures just a little longer so that you fill that entire space. You could have the whole song instead of just having that last 10 seconds be just a black screen with the music, the song ending. Okay. And that would be nice too. Okay. So, things to work on for the 100th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, that, well, that's good because this that video leads into John's video. And I think this is the last one that we're going to see today. 
Uh, he's going to be doing some stuff with a legacy video. So, John, why don't you tell us a little bit about this thing? Yeah, I just uh, wanted to say that look at this as someone 10 or 20 years down the road wanting to learn a little bit about their great grandpa. So there's no bells and whistles, no flash. It's just a story told. It just goes right through from the beginning to the end. So the video production stuff that you would usually do, I didn't do because that's not important. It's like some of you could meet your great grandfather 10 or 20 years down the road. So that's why it's very simple and just straightforward. Do you want to tell who Burley is or do we want to just show it? Uh, you can just show it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take a look. See. I was uh, born in Fort Benning, Georgia, and at the end of the war in 1945, and um, then uh, went to Michigan for four years while my dad attended uh, dental school, and then moved to Billings, Montana, where I grew up and, and went grades one through 12 in, in Billings, Montana. It was, it was a great place to grow up. I really enjoyed that experience. But I realized that I needed to spread my wings. I, I, I knew that I was just a hick from Montana and I need to, and I wanted to travel even from an early age. So I went to college and graduated from Northwestern University in uh, Evanston, Illinois, which was a great experience being right on the uh, border of Chicago and uh, graduated from there in, uh, uh, in 67 and then immediately uh, went to me medical school where I graduated from Ohio State University in 71. So, and then I joined the uh, U.S. Public Health Service, which uh, I, where I served for 11 years. My first gig was uh, a two-year period at the El Reno Federal Reformatory in El Reno, Oklahoma. It was a federal prison. So I was this, this sole prison doc for two years right out of my internship. That was an education, too. Uh, but then I moved to Seattle where we had family and served in the public health service there at the public health hospital in Seattle. That went well, but I, I realized that I was also kind of stagnating because I was a general medical officer and all my interesting patients were being referred out to specialists. So I realized I, I wanted to specialize. So I did. So I moved to Denver, spent three years at uh, the University of Colorado uh, uh, serving as a, uh, a resident in radiology, and then promptly moved back to Seattle, where I stayed in the public health service until uh, President Reagan closed every U.S. public health service hospital down, and uh, so put me out of a job temporarily. But uh, the uh, hospital morphed into a, a different type of hospital. It was not a, a federal hospital anymore. And so I stayed on there and became uh, chief of radiology and served in that capacity for five years. And then uh, realized I wanted to travel, which is one of my great loves. And I hadn't been traveling nearly as much as I wanted to. So I stepped down as chief and uh, uh, and stepped back from full-time radiology and uh, started doing locum tenens work, which uh, is temporary. It's, it's just another uh, word for a temporary uh, physician work. And I served in that capacity until I retired uh, about uh, 12 years ago. While very interesting and challenging, uh, to me, the, some of the more uh, interesting things that I've done were, were really based on hobbies. And uh, one of those and a common thread through my whole life would be imaging. I got a, a brownie flash camera in the third grade, which I still have and still have the pictures from that and started taking pictures uh, at a young age and have been taking pictures ever since in one capacity or another. I suspect that's probably why I went into radiology eventually. It's another form of imaging. Other hobbies that I've had, uh, one would be log cabin building. I built two log cabins. One was a, a just a 10 by 12 bush cabin that I built with a friend. I bought 20 acres in uh, uh, 100 miles east of Seattle. And then 15 years later, designed and contracted out a 16 hundred square foot uh, real log cabin that's that's still there to this day and that that was that was took 20 years to, for me to finish it the uh, they they brought the logs but I did all the finishing work this is disjointed probably because my life is kind of disjointed and comes in chunks but uh, early on I became interested in model railroading and built uh, about a 10 by 30 foot a layout in my basement in Seattle and got interested in that, but I also was interested in the tabletop photography that it, that, I, that I was able to do. And, uh, and then in 2004, 
the uh, International Model Railroad Association convention came to Seattle and they asked me to be the photographer for it, which I did. And then I had to make up the choice. Was I going to finish the layout that I about half uh, was about half finished with, or was I going to be their, their official photographer? And I, and I chose the latter. That seemed to be a, a more interesting challenge to me. So I did that, and that was really fun, moving all over Puget Sound, uh, photographing the top layouts in the area. And um, in the meantime, I either wrote or co-wrote uh, half a dozen articles that got published in various model railroad magazines, and I did all the photography for those, which uh, was uh, a nice challenge using my skills at the uh, tabletop photography. During this time, I was nurturing a, an intense interest in astronomy. I uh, decided that uh, I would lay model railroading aside, which I did, and uh, uh, took up astronomy. And uh, because of the property that I had east of uh, Seattle, it was uh, much darker skies and uh, much clearer skies than, than Seattle. And I built uh, my first observatory, which was uh, really nice. It's called a roll-off roof observatory. It was a 10 by 12 uh, which had lots of room, and and uh, and, and I, that's where I got into astro imaging for the first time. I wanted to take pictures of, of galaxies and whatnot, so I did. When I first started getting into it, uh, I talked to a very this was in Seattle, a very good astrophotographer, and I said, "How long? Just how long is this going to take me?" And he said, "Well." It'll take you about a year to acquire the equipment and learn how to use it, and then it'll take you 10 years to get good at it. And I rolled my eyes and went, no way. Uh, but in fact, that's exactly what happened, that I, I had to, uh, it, it did take 10 years to, to get good at it. I've had a, a website for, for quite a while. And, uh, and, and then during COVID, I decided that it was time um, to put some of my images from the website into a book. And I was actually helping a friend write a book and I realized, well, I have enough material here for a book. So I, I also wrote a book which is available on Amazon. It's a picture book of, of, of my astrophotos. But I also realized that there were better skies available to me. So I moved down to uh, Green Valley, Arizona, where I now live. And the reason for that was for clear skies. And it's some of the best skies and dark skies in, in the country. I uh, uh, bought a uh, Astro Haven dome that's still in my backyard, and I still use it for for astro imaging. It's uh, so I'm, I still have a foot <laughs> foot in the door in the in the, uh, in the imaging department. As I mentioned, I, I always wanted to travel and have always uh, enjoyed traveling. So I was uh, just thinking this morning. I uh, I think I've uh, been to Asia about a dozen times, uh, took a one month uh, tour of China back in 83, and uh, also just North Africa. I, I really enjoyed Tunisia and, and um, Morocco. And, um, but then I've also been to Europe about, about a dozen times. And then another time I decided that I would uh, go down and photograph all the major Mayan ruins in Central America, which I did over a number of years. I realized that I hadn't been to South America or a Antarctica. So I did that about five years ago. That was actually a cruise, but uh, we went pretty much around uh, South America and, and spent several days in Antarctica and went through Costa Rica, spent time in... Co I, I'd actually been to Costa Rica before, but as, as uh, John knows, the, the birding there is, is fantastic. It's, uh, it's a birder's paradise. So instead of listing the birds that I saw there, I photographed them. So, oh, I, I, I should also mention that I've been married and divorced twice, and I'm in a long-term relationship with Lisa, a wonderful woman. And I have one wonderful daughter by marriage and one wonderful granddaughter by marriage, and we're very close. The most recent hobby that I've uh, come up with, and I, I decided, and this is only two weeks ago, I've, uh, well, way back in the day, I, I played clarinet throughout high school and junior high for about uh, eight or 10 years. And so I, I had some musical background and, and then uh, left that and got into guitar. And so I've been plinking around on a guitar for some 50 years. Um, but I'd never played a piano in my life, had no idea how to do it and decided it was time I learned. I'm 77 years old now and I thought, 
you know, it's never too late to try something new. So that's what I, uh, I just bought a piano and I'm trying to, trying to learn boogie woogie, which is <laughs> a challenge, but it's, it's a lot of fun and, and um, I'm having, having a good time. That was fabulous. Uh, yeah, and that needs to be titled Renaissance Man. <laughs> I can't see it. Seriously. Remarkable, remarkable fellow. Very nice. What do we think about that? Well put together. Wow. Wow. I have a quick question. The interview flows so smoothly. It's like it was just one continuous uh interview it, i know it was it was it was one take really yeah i just sat down to tell me about so yourself incredible. yeah oh my god and then i cut some things out and that's what yeah it, but still a few yeah. transitions wow. no, he just went one to the other there were two shots the shot of him playing the piano and the and the and oh, telling the story and with, 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 with my, the photos that he had my phone and he sent me the photos yeah nice He's got 30,000 photos, <laughs> all perfectly organized. I said, oh, like, this, 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 and then came in an hour. Wow. Yeah. So was the guy ever an astronaut? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't think of anything he hasn't done. He's still got time. He's always having some So did you just ask him to talk, or did you have a leading photo to start with it? or? Uh, uh, no, I, I just uh, I just set up my little phone, you know, this phone, and uh, said, tell me your story. That was uh, it. Wow. Did, did you have it mounted on a tripod or something? I did, yeah. Okay. But I never, I, uh, and Kevin has helped me a great deal with this. He said, you need iPro. I mean, uh, uh, Final Cut Pro and not iMovie. So yeah. uh, that's, this is the thing where I'm learning Final Cut Pro. But uh, I, I just, because I didn't have a microphone for him and I knew the sound would be bad, I, I put the phone right next to him so I could never uh, change the, the, the focal length. And now I've done another one since then with uh, Chuck Dore, who runs uh, Friends Indeed. And, uh, and I did a, a wide establishing shot and then just using Final Cut Pro, I go in and out, in and out. So that works really nicely. Well, you also bought a microphone that you could plug into the phone so that you could get the camera a little further away, yeah, and, and that so still yeah, that get the nice sound, and yet that have well. that ability. Yeah. Well, cause um, on on the post of of him speaking, where before he put in the shop, there's an aberration of yeah. doors on the right. <laughs> Good for you, spot that stabilization. He has yeah. stabilization turned on the phone without, and the phone is is wanting to stabilize, although it's on a tripod, it doesn't need to stabilize. Uh, so, <laughs> When we first started looking at this and kind of showing this, I was like, immediately I saw that. And I'm like, did you have stabilization turned on? It's like, yes. Yeah, no. Okay. So how do you turn it off? <laughs> uh, there's a setting in the phone. He's, you're on an Android, right? Yeah, Android, yeah. So he, he can turn it off, apparently, which we can't do on yeah, okay. iPhone. <laughs> so anyway, did that work better than for the yes. switch one? Yeah, absolutely. Good. All that disappeared. We tried to do some tricks to to putting the mask around, which helped <laughs> darken that up a little bit. So hopefully it wasn't as noticeable. I think it's something that some of us will notice. General public's never going to notice that that what's going on. I don't think they're listening to him. So it's like anything else. You live and you learn with these projects, and you do them. And something like that, where you say, "Oh, okay, I don't need the stabilization. Let's turn it off." Now I'm getting a really nice clean picture. So you can't crop it out. No, because he's already he's, I'm already right in here, right? He's so okay. tight. And we talked about yeah. uh there was a couple of transitions that he had where he's using a cross dissolve. And we talked about instead of doing a cross dissolve, do a just a hard cut and zoom in a little bit. Well, we looked at it and it didn't look good. Yeah. The other goody too is that 
uh, again, not to get into the weeds, but he's editing, editing in 1080 and it's shot in 1080. So if we zoom in or degrade the image, we could go in a little bit, but it's not worth doing. So, so you didn't shoot the interview in 4K? No. The phone doesn't have the capability. So, so anyway, but that's like anything else. Well, one thing that uh, when you showed your first video, the yeah. first video we saw today, you did these wonderful transitions where you just went to black, you took a breath, and the subject changed. That would have worked really, really yes. well here. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> You'll have to show me we'll work on that. Yeah, it's, but that's what I would have done if I if I I wish I tried it a couple times, couldn't figure out how to get that black in there. But it's just, aside from the technical how you did it, the concept, the overall concept yeah. of going in there and doing this interview and gleaning the information back up to share is incredible. You know, I, I was on a, a trip. I was on a tall ship in uh, November, and uh, we'd come into these ports, and everyone would gather around. I was meeting all these characters, and I'd never thought of this before, but I had my phone in my pocket, and this is the amazing thing. It's these phones now take great video. You know, my last phone, uh, this is an S22. My S21 did took moderately good video, and now it's suddenly great video. Sure. So I'm just talking to this guy. I said, do you mind? And I just uh, grabbed the phone, and then from my phone, I uploaded those things to YouTube, and they just and and uh, sent an email saying here's the link, and I just got this explosion of, of thank you, thank you, thank you. We sent it to the kids, and they're so grateful. I thought, wow, there's something here. Yeah. Now the technology is made really, really easy with YouTube and the phone. This is easy to do. So that's what I'm sort of hoping to bring here as uh, to say to people, you know, with your phone, you can just do this with people you love and care about, sure. and uh, put it up on YouTube, and there it is for. Ever? Yeah. Maybe. Well, Maybe. the other thing that's nice too about this with him interviewing Burley, it's kind of like you just get him started and the guy just goes. You don't have to yeah. do anything. Yeah. And I think when you're starting to do some of these legacy videos, you might have to prompt people a little better. You know, tell me a little bit yeah. more about that. But, but I'm finding people, and by the time they get to 70 or 65 or something, They've got their stories down. Okay. Yeah. They know their story. Well, that's good. They tell it, and you don't have to do a thing. Now, did you know him, Charlie? Yeah, he's a oh. friend Yeah. Okay. Yes, right. What happened was I came back here, and uh, this is a group that I meet for coffee on good. Sunday morning at McDonald's, right? And so I showed them the little videos I'd done on the, and they all said, Did you do me? Oh, yeah. So I'm doing the whole group. Uh, no, way. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. got one to go. Well, you bring one of those like next week of a, a stranger, well, a short one. Uh, yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah, I can Does show you that. Oh, this? Yeah, I, I, yeah, they're very short, so I'd be delighted. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Did you use any lighting when you were photographing? I bought, uh, I bought a little uh, twenty bucks on Amazon, a little thing for the no, the please. Zoom, the, the the for Zoom calls, right? Right. That so goes on the top of my thing, and then I have a little mini tripod that I just put that on the top of. And I just put that over here just to have for a little film lighting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it works very nice. Yeah, one of the little circles yep. and it's got color temperature and you just by eye, you can get the color temperature right. And it uh, and it fades up or down a little bit mm -hmm. in a second. Well, I mean, my background was with videographer, so that's the easy part for me. <laughs> Every, I always had editors to do all that. And now I've got Kevin. So <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got Kevin. Trust me, we're all learning. Yeah, and it's and it's it just takes time. That's the biggest thing that I would tell anybody. Right out of the box, short of bricks. <laughs> yeah, it's like wow, uh, but you're gonna learn. Yes, sir. So this is kind of a question. I put up a couple of my videos on YouTube because I want to share them with some family and friends. So come to the camera, something that. So was, I've only got two or three up there, but I was wondering, is there any detriment or any detriment to doing that? Or so just that's just another way to share. Um, YouTube. Switches your video if it was 4K when you started. Uh -huh. Everything is cut down to 1080 on YouTube. That's the only change they make. And when you upload a video, you'll see processing mm -hmm. something or other yeah. definition, and it's making it 1080. Yeah. The one thing that the only thing that will happen, this happens over years though, if you post something to YouTube and let's say it's 1080 or 720 as the size eventually maybe five six years down the road right. youtube knocks that down to like 480 okay. and it's low res at least it's still there but it's mm -hmm. it's not forever in high depth so that's the only downside to it but it's a great way to share stuff and the other thing that's nice about it is you can send somebody you can make the link 
or you can make the video public, obviously, like we do our multimedia stuff. You can do uh, unlisted, which means that uh, anybody that you share the link with can see the video, or you can do private where only you can see the video. Or people you share it directly. Uh, I don't it's know if really really private. Oh, private. I can't do the unlisted. Oh, okay. So anyway, but that's a, that's a great way if you've got something you don't want out. You know, Sherry Lee does some stuff with her grandkids. She sings and storytells and stuff. And she'll send it, but she'll do it unlisted. Okay. So that it's so out it's there, nice. but it's, not, it's not out to the general public. Not online. searchable. Yep, exactly. Yeah. If anybody can see it, but it's not searchable. Yes. Now, we can, can we in this room link to YouTube and access YouTube like on the screen? As in, like right now, if you want me to go to YouTube? Or I can go to YouTube, sure. No, I didn't necessarily want you to. Oh, I just wanted just want, to know yeah. if we have the capability. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, and actually connected to the internet. Yeah, so we're, okay. we're on the internet. And that problem of the jerky uh, uh, transitions, I mean, yeah. not transitions, but the uh, uh, pans and tilts right. jerked along, probably wouldn't happen if you did the YouTube version, but imagine. I yeah, I will have to, we'll have to look at that. I saw that. Look at, yeah. He had some movement, and there was a little bit of hurt and jerky. Which is an in that. Sometimes, though, it... Sometimes Final Cut has issues. We'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody have anything else that they want to add today? All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit the party for today. We've had a great session. Gosh, thank you to everybody for sharing all these videos. We had so much to share today, which is wonderful. We meet again next Monday on the 13th, and we will be here in the club and Zoom. Uh, one other quick goodie. I'm sorry before I shut off. Send off. We're gonna, I'll be showing or doing a little iMovie demo here next Tuesday, a week from Tuesday. And if you go to the club's website, you can sign up for that. And we're gonna scratch the service of iMovie and get some people started if you're on a Mac or on an iPad like Rick is. So anyway, we'll be doing that as well. All right, everybody. Thank you. Have a great rest of the week. We'll see you next week.